Hey, how you doing? It's Craig Beckett here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate your HD TV or your 4K TV using SpectraCal's Kalman software and the X-Rite i1 Display Pro. All right, let's get started. So in a second, we're going to go to the computer. I'm going to walk you through step by step using the SpectraCal Kalman software. Now, if you're watching this video, you may be on the fence whether you should calibrate it yourself or whether you should hire someone. I know Best Buy has a service where they'll come out and do it for three or four hundred dollars. I highly recommend doing this yourself, especially if you're already a photographer and you calibrate your computer monitor, it makes sense to calibrate your TV as well. Now you can use the X-Rite i1 Display Pro to calibrate your computer monitor to make sure you have accurate colors, and you can also use that to calibrate your television using the SpectraCal Kalman software, which I'll walk you through. Now if you think about it, movies and television is set to a certain standard, but if you don't calibrate your TV, then you're not really seeing the results you should be seeing. Just like if you don't calibrate your computer monitor, your photographs aren't gonna have accurate color, the same goes for your TV, and that's why I think it's very important. And it's easy to do, and you can do it yourself, and you'll see that in this video. All right, let's get to the software portion of this video. All right, so here we are on the computer. We're looking at the Kalman software here. And what's great about this is you can choose a wide number of workflows. I'm gonna put a link below in the description box below this video, and I'll give you a link to the SpectraCal website where you can check out the different versions of software that they have, as well as I'll have a link to a tutorial, a written tutorial too. All right, so let's get started. So if we go here to workflow, this is the first page that comes up. You can see there's a number of different workflows. We're gonna pick a basic calibration. You can also give it a name or a description right there. We're gonna click Start Session, and I'll walk you through the software. What's great about this software is it's very step-by-step, -step, and there's also instructions as well, and there's also help, so I found it very easy. And once you do it once or twice, it becomes really second nature. It's really fantastic software to work with. So I'm gonna click on Next right here at the bottom, and you can see Find Source. And so right now, if we were gonna use a DVD test pattern, then that would be fine, we'd leave it for there. But if we wanted to use the SpectraCal Mobile Forge app, which I'm using, we'd click Find Source here. Now you can see it says Manual Control, that would be for a DVD. Now these are different test pattern devices that you can use that are compatible with the Kalman software. I'm gonna choose SpectraCal here, and I'm gonna click here, and I'm gonna look for the Mobile Forge app. Now you can download this app for iOS or Android. I'm gonna click here. Now this is gonna be using my iPhone, so it's searching for my iPhone. Once it shows up, I click on my iPhone and I click connect. Now I'm connected to my iPhone and my iPhone is going to display the test patterns through the Apple TV. Now I'll also put some settings for your Apple TV in the written tutorial. I'll put that link in the description box just below this video. But you want to make sure your Apple TV is set up properly so that you're getting the proper test patterns on your television. So I'll just say it again. I'm using the Apple TV in conjunction with my iPhone and the Mobile Forge app to create these test patterns on my television. Now there's also Android, iOS, and there's also an Amazon Fire Stick. Now you can also use a DVD for test patterns. That'll be a separate video. I'll put a link in the description box below for how you can calibrate using a DVD. But right now we're using the Mobile Forge app. I hope that's clear. I'm gonna click on Next. And you can see here, Find Meter. It's already found my meter. So I'm using the X-Rite i1 Display Pro Retail version. Now number two, this is your LCD lighting configuration. So some TVs have different, so you see there's LCD LED, there's LCD LED RGB. I'm using a 4K Sony TV. I contacted SpectraCal. I suggest you do the same and make sure that you have this setting correct. For my TV, it's LCD LED blue green. So that's a setting for my Sony TV. It may be different for yours. I would contact SpectraCal and make sure you have that set right. Now we'll go to the next screen. We'll skip here as well. Now, I'm calibrating a 4K TV for standard, uh, there's Ultra HD, this is just standard dynamic range right now. So my color space is Rec. 709 sRGB, the white point is D65, Gamma Formula ITU BT1886. Again, this is the display type for my Sony TV, the LCD LED blue-green setting, pattern size 100. 
I'll click Next again. Now here, you would put your different settings. So this would be your pre-calibration settings. So what I recommend that you do is you call up your default settings for a movie mode. So on a Samsung TV, it would be a movie kind of preset. On the Sony, they have Cinema Pro and that type of thing. So I would pick something that's close to a movie setting and then just fill this out. So whatever your current color temperature is, your gamma. I'm gonna walk you through these settings in a second on my TV. I'm not gonna fill this out, I don't wanna bore you, but I would put these settings so that you can compare your pre-calibration with your post-calibration settings. And I'm gonna click on Next again. Normally I would fill that out. Now once I click on this, we're gonna run through a series of test patterns. So with my other camera, I'll show you. I have the x ray color meter set up in the center of my screen, and that's going to measure the different test patterns. Now there's a couple of different methods. There's the contact method where I have this just touching my screen. There's also some people say that they prefer the non-contact method. I'm gonna put a written tutorial. I'll put a link to that in the description where I'll go into more depth about contact versus non-contact. I'm using the contact method and I have a boom stand. I'm also a photographer. I'm lucky to have this boom stand and it allows me to put the color meter in the exact position that I need. All right, so let's just do a pre-cal run. Now you can see here, we can play a single test pattern here, or I can put read series. Now this is great. If you're using a DVD, this is a manual process where you'll have to go to each screen on the DVD, but because I'm using the SpectraCal Kalman Mobile 4 app, it does it for me. So just watch what happens as I click read series. It's going to run through the various test patterns, and then it's gonna take a measured reading of that. So this is the pre-calibration view. I'm on the Pro Cinema setting, and I'll show you in a second. Uh, there's a couple tips I wanna give you before we should have done this, but you wanna make sure that everything is zeroed out. So I'm gonna call that up in a second as this goes through this. Once it's done, I'll call it up and I'll show you what I mean. But before you do the pre-calibration, you wanna make sure that any additional processing that your TV offers is turned off. So I'll call that up on the Sony TV and I'll show you what that looks like. It's gonna look a little different if you're a Samsung or LG user, but the thought process is basically the same. So we're on picture mode, Cinema Pro. And what I mean is any external processing like auto picture mode, that's off. Now the brightness and contrast, you can set that with a test pattern beforehand with the ABS 709. You can download that for free and that'll help you set your brightness and your contrast on your TV. I've already done this, so I know roughly brightness should be around 18. Now, if we go to this mode here, you could see if I look on the right, you could see my black adjust is off, the advanced contrast enhancer, auto local dimming, all of these processing modes, live color off. Just wanna make sure these are all set to off, reality creation off, random noise, digital noise. Set all of the extra external processing that your TV can do to off. We just want the basics for this calibration. So I just want to show you that. You should do that prior to doing your pre-calibration little run that I just did. But you can see here now, if we look at the screen, you can see there's a real blue push. It looks like green and red are pretty close together across the board. If we look left to right, 10 would be the darker darks or blacks, and then we go to 100, that's the brighter brights or the whites. So that's how that graph works. Now we're gonna go to next, we're gonna go to the next screen and we're gonna start making some adjustments. Now, they have different settings depending on your TV. Now the Sony has, like I said, the Cinema Pro, they have, I'll show you a couple here. And it's a little different on the Sony and the Samsung. So we have Cinema Pro, but if I click here, I also have Cinema Home or Custom. So we wanna pick one that's close to 6,500, and that's the temperature we want. And I know the Cinema Pro, Cinema Home are pretty close to that. On the Samsung, I believe the movie mode is probably one that you wanna start with. So that's what we're gonna measure. So I'm just gonna click that off here. I just wanna make sure that's off screen. And then what I could do here is say, read series. But what is also pretty neat about this too is they also have a continuous if you look to the right here, it's a read continuous. Now what that allows you to do is when you click on that, you can go through the different modes and see if you can find one that's a little closer to 6,500. Now I already know from testing 
that this mode is the closest I can get to 6500, so that's the one I'm going to choose. Now, let me just show you what would happen if I switch modes, for example. It shouldn't really change too much on this one. Actually, let me show you on the next one because there's also a different mode um, I'll show you in a second because all of these modes on the Sony are pretty good. They're pretty close to 6500, but let's go to the next screen and I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to skip that one. Now there's a mode setting color temperature. Now they have this on the Sony, they have this on Samsung as well. And so we've picked that first one, the Cinema Pro, but if I go down here to advanced settings and if I go to color, you can see I have color temperature. Now you'll see this as well on a Samsung and other TVs. So Expert 1, you can see we've got Expert 2, we have Cool, we have Neutral, we have Warm. You'll see settings like Warm 1 and Warm 2 on the Samsung. Now, as I go through this, you'll see how this Read Continuous works. So I'm just gonna say uh, Read Series, and it's gonna read the series here, and it's gonna show me the temperature. Now watch what happens if I put Read Continuous and then if I switch this mode, you should see the temperatures change because it's reading continuous. So as I get to something that's a little different, you can see right now, that's a lot higher than the suggested 6500. So just from trial and error, knowing, doing this a few times, I know that Expert One is pretty close to 6500 on my set. So I'll put a list of all my settings for the Sony TV at the end of this video too so that you can just use those as a starting point for your calibration. So I'm at Expert One, and I'm at Cinema Pro, and I'm gonna to go to the next screen. Now we're gonna measure our gamma, and it's very similar too. We can do the read series, we can do continuous read, and make some adjustments till we get the suggested gamma reading. Now I'm gonna read series here, and it's gonna go through, and it's gonna read this and it's at 2.2. So I also have a link to a written tutorial that goes a little deeper, but I want to be around 2.2 for my room. Now some people might want to be around 2.4 for a darker room, but I'm going to calibrate my TV for a brighter room. Now I also suggest too that you do this in a darkened room without external light sources bouncing off of your TV. So I've got the curtains closed in here. I don't have any other light sources hitting my TV. I wouldn't suggest doing this uh, in a really bright room. Um, so try to keep that in mind too, is when you calibrate it. I don't think it has to be a totally black room, but make sure there's no external light sources bouncing off your TV. All right, so we're gonna go to next here. I'm happy with that gamma setting. Now I'm gonna skip this one here. I don't have any adjustments for that. I'm gonna skip this. Um, just from trial and error, I know my brightness and contrast settings are pretty accurate the way I have them right now. I'm gonna skip this one as well. I've already done this. You can use a test disk to do this. So here's where we get into the actual calibration of things right here. And this is where it's gonna get interesting and I can make some adjustments. Now this is gonna measure at 30% and 80%. And what I wanna do is make some adjustments and you'll see that in real time to those settings. So we're gonna come over here. We're gonna click read series. Now this is gonna read the series and it's gonna show us a little graph. Now I'm gonna start with the high point and then we'll do the low point and they work together. Now in order to be able to see my adjustments in real time, I click read continuous. So I'm gonna click on the action menu on the Sony TV. I'm gonna to go to picture adjustments and then I'm going to go to advanced settings. So I'll have that pop up so you can see that. Now you can see my brightness is at 18, my contrast is at 90, my gamma is minus one. It's different, my home setting's a little brighter. This is my movie setting, so Pro Cinema, the gamma's at minus one, the black level is at 50. And then we're gonna go to color. We're gonna go to advanced color temperature right here. Now you can see we have red, green, and blue. So R gain, G gain, blue gain. Now that's the upper portion, so the 80%. So if we wanna adjust that, we adjust these controls. Now on the Sony TV, they're at max. That's the default setting. It may be different on a Samsung. The default setting might be in the middle. It might be neutral or 50. Now for the lower settings, this is the red, green, blue, or the R bias, G bias, B bias. This is to adjust 
the 30% portion. So as I look to the right at where it says 80% there, that's the upper portion. So I want to use the R gain, G gain, or B gain. I can see that the blue gain is too high. So I'm going to click on the blue gain, B gain, and I'm going to go minus and see what happens as we go to the left or take some of that blue out. Now you can see here we have a 0, a 1, 2, 3 on the right where you can see the gray patterns. We want that to be just below 1. So I'm going to keep going till I can get that to go below 1. You can see I'm at minus 7. We're getting there. And you can see I'm at minus 8. Let's go again. Minus 9. And we're starting to get into that window. Now I think, now that I look at it, I probably have to take the red down. So I'm going to go back up to the red. So make sure that you're on the gain setting because it's easy to make a mistake here. Make sure you're adjusting the proper things. Now I've taken the red down and you can see we're well below one, but I think I might've gone too far because I don't want to go too crazy because it's going to affect my 30%. So I'm going to go back to eight and see where we are. And that's above one. So I have to be at about nine. So my settings there, if I show you again, we're going to go back. It's picture adjustments. Let's walk you through how that works. Picture adjustments, advanced settings. We're going to go to color, advanced color temperature. And you can see now my red gain is minus one and my blue gain is minus nine. That's the upper portion. Now that's calibrated. Now, when I make adjustments here to the bias, it may affect the upper portion. So it's a bit of a back and forth here. Make sure you're on the low settings, the 30% if you're doing the bias on the Sony. So we'll go back to center again. So you can see my bias is all zero. My gain still the same. I look at it and I realize the green needs to be adjusted. So I click on that and we'll adjust my green. Now I'll go to the left and you can see as I'm adjusting the green, my gray 30 patch there is going down. I want to get below my, or one right there. So I don't want to go too far in the green. I can see that I could probably make an adjustment on the red. It went up. So it's a matter of really just playing with the different settings until you get where you want to be. And I've got about a minus six there in the green. I'm going to go minus seven. And when it stops going down, then go back to your last setting. So at minus six, it had moved. I went to minus seven. It didn't. Now I'm going to go to the red. I'll see if I can get it to go lower. So it moved. So I'm good. I'll try it again. It didn't move. So it's a bit of back and forth now. Now I'm going to go to the green. We'll try the green again. If it goes down, we're good. Now I can see I'm right under one. So if I click here, you can see now with my bias settings, I'm red minus two, green bias minus seven. So my bottom end is good. Let's go back and test the upper end. So I'm going to go back to the 80% patch here and we're going to do the continuous reading. And now that's off. So we have to look at that and say, well, what's off about that? It looks like maybe the red is too high. So we're going to go back up to the red gain. Now these are the red gain, the higher settings. I'm going to go minus two there. And now you can see that's in the window. Now we have to go and test the low end again to make sure that's right. So we're testing the low end and they're both, well, it's sort of, well, they're both at one. And it's a little bit of back and forth of going back and forth between your gain and your bias on the Sony. So I'm going to click next. And then here we would put our after settings. So our picture mode would be pro cinema. The color temperature would be expert one. Our gamma was minus one. And to get those settings here, again, you just hit the action menu on the Sony and it's going to vary depending on the set. Picture adjustments, cinema pro would be our picture mode. And then you'd see our brightness setting would be 18. Our color would be 50. Our advanced settings here, you can see our contrast would be 90. Our gamma would be minus one. Our black level would be 50. And then we'd go to color settings. Color would be 50. Hue would be zero. Again, there's the color temperature, expert one. Then we'd go to our advanced color temperature here. And you could see the one on the right, high red would be minus two. Green gain would be max. The high blue, that would be minus nine. And then on the left, the low settings, that would be our red bias would be minus two. Our low green, green bias would be minus eight. And then the low blue B bias would be zero. And if you have any notes, you can put that. So that's really a two point calibration. You can get more advanced. You can see here we have a 10 point 
calibration. I'll save that for another video. And this is where you go through and you adjust the different ranges. And that'll be in a separate video. I'll put a link below in the description box. And now, after you've done this, what you can do is now you can turn back on your settings that you had previously. And for the Sony, I'll shoot a different video with all my Sony settings, but I would turn on my auto local dimming, etc. I'll put a link below this video and you can watch that one that shows all of the Sony settings once I've done my calibration. But that's the basics of walking through this. Now what you can do too is when you go to next, you can do the post calibration. So if you recall, the blue was way off on that uh, pre-calibration. So what we'll do is we'll click read series and we're going to go through and this is the post calibration. And this really helps you get a better view of the adjustments you've made. And you may find that you might want to go back and do this a second time. And actually, once you do this a couple of times, it becomes kind of addictive and becomes kind of fun. And you start to say, wow, look how much tighter this is. I bet you I can do better. <laughs> At least that's how I find it. And I just find it really, um, it's kind of enjoyable actually to do this yourself. And so I'm gonna put a link below to the SpectraCal software. And I'll also put a coupon code that will save you 10% off home enthusiast. So if you're just getting started with this, I recommend the SpectraCal home enthusiast version. And I'll put a coupon code below that'll save you 10% off and a link to their website. And they also have a ton of tutorials on YouTube as well, as well as instructions. And I really recommend this software. It's great. I really enjoy it. I've used this on my Sony TV and my Samsung 1080p TV, and it's never looked better. I never calibrated my TVs in the past and I'm shocked at how good my 1080p TV looks. It's very comparable to my 4K Sony TV, and I'm really surprised that it looks that much better, but it, it looks like that because I've used the SpectraCal Kalman software to calibrate it using the X-ray color meter, and I learned how to do it myself, and you can do the same too. So watch this video a couple times. If you have any questions, ask them in the comment section below. Also look in the description box below this video. I'll put links to other videos that I'm gonna create for this series as well as a written tutorial so that for people who like to read to sort of understand things as well. But you can see from this post calibration view that we've got our red, green, and blue tracking down the center line. The gamma is not perfect, but I can make some tweaks to that knowing where things fit now. And so this is my first video in the series for SpectraCal Kalman TV calibration software. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments, put them in the comment section below. Please give me a thumbs up for this video. Also share this video on the web in TV forums as well if you found it helpful. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is primarily a photography channel, but I also do videos like this as well. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. And once again, if you're not already a subscriber, just hit that subscribe button. Also hit that like button and also share this video on the web with anyone that you think that might be interested in calibrating their HD or 4K TV. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you leave a comment below if you have any questions and I'll create future videos in this calibration series to address those questions that you have. All right, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next video.